Catholic identity, a holy family. Certainly, we had mass every week in the gym. Priests would come in. Remember, I still remember a number of um, a number of those priests who were able to come in to visit us. Uh, and certainly their example, their homilies. But this call moved from a, just a possibility to a, not a certainty per se, but it was much more clear, I would say, just progressively over the course of really my freshman and sophomore years at Savio. I realized that throughout this entire time, my time at Holy Family, my time at Savio, over the course of these seven or eight years that I'd been considering this question, I realized that everything that I knew about the priesthood was everything that my heart was desiring. So there was a correspondence between what, what the priesthood offers and what I wanted out of my life, really what I wanted to give, what I wanted to do with my life. It's been really special sort of having our first uh, ordained priest um, come out of Savio and Savio being such a young school and you know I, I, I believe and I pray that it continues to happen. When you show Christ to young people they recognize their Lord and want to give their lives to him um, but I think what's also so special about Holy Family and Savio is that our students see priests and they see religious and they see married couples and they see laity who are on fire for the faith and so they, they see what does a life given to God look like and they can picture their own lives in that role and they're given the support to choose and to consider how is God calling me to greatness. My teacher, my religion teacher, she was she was actually a sister. It was it was kind of sudden. She just like came up to me and she was like, you know, SV, I feel like like God was telling me to tell you that you would be a good sister. I kinda like buried it in my heart, so I haven't I haven't taken it out really until um, until these like past two years, and now I'm just kind of thinking about it more. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Bless I ca I realized that there was a chapel here, and so I started coming more. And then I asked my friend if she wanted to come with me. Eventually. I started inviting more friends, and she invited more friends too. Now we're a group of like six people. It's important to just pray, um, to have that communication with, with our Lord, and make sure that He's present in your life all the time, um, offering even the little things to Him, and making making sure that, that He's there, um, and, and that you, you're there with Him. One student in particular, actually, who I had the chance of teaching just a couple of years ago, his name is Michael Snyder. He was a senior during my first year here at Savio. He was, he was well-liked by all his friends, athletic guy, kind of popular. But I think what set him apart other than those things was he had a deep, deep love for the Lord and the faith. And, you know, St. Dominic Savio is the kind of school that he didn't have to pick one or the other. He could be the athletic, popular kid liked by his friends who was radically in love with the Lord and wanted to be a priest, and his friends were supportive of that. I can think of three different sisters who I lived with just last year, actually, who came through Holy Family and Savio, and they talk about what it meant being at these schools. It was such a gift to um, be able to be taught by the sisters. So um, all three years I was taught by Sister Mary Elizabeth when I was at, at Savio, and I have to be honest that as much as she was an incredible science teacher and she taught me physics and chemistry and as I was listening to her lectures I did great in her class but I was mostly imagining myself in her habit. And actually all three of them ended up pursuing their vocation straight out of high school and that's not something that, that everyone can do but they felt so much support and they felt so much um, confirmation that if God was calling them they could answer right away that they didn't have to wait. And, and that was really a gift of the community, but it also for many of them was a gift of people stepping forward and, and helping them to, to answer that call. So I, I, I would want people to know that your aid and help really does make such a great difference in the lives of young people. Oftentimes the world has so much noise and whatnot and just so much mess out there. Um, there's so much telling us in the world today to pursue pursue this, to, to do that. Well, I mean, that's well and good, and certainly not all those things are bad, but oftentimes in the midst of that cacophony, um, the voice of God sometimes gets drowned out. So if, if there's someone out there, and this is perhaps um, what my most particular advice for anyone uh, in 
you know, middle school or high school who's, who's thinking about the priesthood is if there's, if that thought is already on your mind, if you've already experienced a hint of that particular call, then that's something to pursue. Not necessarily that you are going to be a priest or not even necessarily that you will eventually enter seminary, but you know, there's something there. And if that call has made it through all this mess out there, there's something real about that. So certainly echoing John Paul II, echoing basically all the saints, um, don't be afraid to follow that because it is, it really is a beautiful, beautiful life. Um, having been a priest for a grand total of three months, um, I can say that it's certainly been the best three months of my life. I've had so many beautiful experiences with people that I would never have had had I not been ordained.